Here in England, it's Easter Monday, and I'm renovating a vintage horizontal twin-cylinder model steam engine, even though it's a beautiful warm spring day outside. This is part 13, and I'm cleaning up the cylinder cover. This is a marker made when I removed the cover to show me which way was up. Ordinary brown paper, and I'm using this to make the gaskets, because the gaskets on the original engine were also made of brown paper, and anything thicker would make it difficult to refit the cylinder cladding. I'm pressing a piece of the brown paper up against the cylinder, which gives me the outline to cut to. And once I've done that, I smear some ordinary grease on the cylinder cover, and I stick the piece of brown paper to the cylinder cover. Once the brown paper gasket is stuck to the inside surface of the cylinder cover with the grease, it's time to drill the holes in the gasket. And the best way to do this is to use a piece of scrap wood, which you can then use to rest the cylinder cover on, complete with the gasket material, whilst you drill through the existing cylinder cover holes and make a hole in the gasket material. On this particular engine, the machining of the steam ports at the edge of the cylinder was a little bit too ambitious, so there's no room for a cylinder bolt at the two extreme edges of the cylinder cover. Instead, the cylinder cover is simply threaded and a very small bolt is screwed into there as a dummy. As you can see, I'm putting all the bolts in place fairly randomly, but I'm not putting them in tight. They have to be slack to allow for a small amount of movement to accommodate the fitting of the other side of the cylinder cover. And there you see the small bolt going into the threaded part of the cylinder cover at the outer edge. Now I'm fitting the cylinder bolts to the cylinder cover at the other side. Same process, and again, not tight. I need everything to go in nice and smoothly. I don't want anything to bind. As I dismantled this engine, I noticed that not one bolt was sheared, and to shear off a bolt now, putting it all back together, would be a real travesty. Time now to tighten up the bolts. There is one minor problem, that some of the heads of these bolts are a different size, so if you see me changing the socket, that's because I'm having to do so to accommodate the different sizes. I'm working on bolts opposite each other more or less, in some sort of a sequence although it's not terribly important. Fitting a small brass cylinder cover to a small brass engine like this does not need the same technique that you would use, for instance, on a car cylinder head, where you'd be using a torque wrench and always doing it in a set sequence. I'm just making sure that I get all the bolts evenly tight, and I'm having to change the socket periodically because, as I previously mentioned, some of these bolts have smaller heads than the others. Not that you'd notice that it's a very small tolerance. I just do not want to risk rounding the heads of any of the undersized bolts by using an oversized socket. With the front cylinder cover bolted in place, it's now time to reverse the direction of rotation of the engine. Because I want to make sure that if anyone puts their hands on the flywheels when the engine is running, that the flywheels turn towards the engine and don't unscrew and fly off and run round the room. Although the engine doesn't have any tight spots, it's generally a little tighter overall than it used to be, although it will run in soon enough. What I'm doing at the moment is adjusting the position of the eccentric on the crankshaft to get the valve timing as near as possible. And that sounds pretty close to me. Don't forget I'm running the engine one side at a time. And the sound is pretty similar. One side is a little louder, but the beats are very even. A thing that's very noticeable is the engine does not wheeze like it did at first. So my new pistons are a success. They fit the bore accurately, and the O-ring is just the icing on the cake. My original concern about the oil holes in the centre of each cylinder damaging the silicone piston ring seems to be unfounded as the engine runs very well indeed. Thanks for watching, I hope you found it useful.